Many of us grow up playing games, whether it's on the soccer field or the basketball court, or on our cell phones and desktop computers. As we become more sophisticated, we might play chess or poker, or at the highest extreme, we might strategize in war. We see games everywhere around us. They define, in a lot of ways, the very basic human competitive experience. And there's a single thread that actually unites all of these experiences within one category. You, as an agent, must make a decision using information from your surroundings and potentially consider in the process what your opponent or adversary might do in response. John von Neumann, in 1928, recognized this same thread and tried to pull it to examine what it is that makes a game so structured and common and whether we can gain insights from the decision-making process involved in games and apply them to, if not, identify them in real life. Welcome to the Theory of Games and Economic Behavior. This is a 700-page text published in 1944 by John von Neumann and economist Oscar Morgenstern. And while they consider many the, of the variations of games and scenarios that might affect decision-making, in terms of the number of players, the finiteness of the number of turns, the number of possible moves, and the sum of the payoff, as well as other factors, they distill their argument into a very simple model. One player engages in a game against another player with a finite number of alternating turns and a zero-sum payoff. They then spend the bulk of the book explaining the limitations of this model and generalizing it across the different possible variations. The principal contribution of this work comes from a proof of the Minimax theorem, which proves that for any two-person zero-sum game, each player has a Minimax strategy that allows her to minimize her losses against an opponent who's trying to maximize her losses. That is, a player will always have an optimal strategy in choosing to maximize her minimum gain. At a first glance, this book seems entirely detached from computer science unless you've taken an artificial intelligence course. It talks about games from an economic perspective. What's important to remember, however, is that the ideas in this book were first proposed in 1928 and fully fleshed out in the 1940s, at the peak of the Second World War. This predates modern electronic computer science. In fact, von Neumann himself was one of the creators of EDVAC at the University of Pennsylvania just a year after the publication of his text on game theory. And it's likely the case that his thoughts on computation were directly entwined with the decision-making insights you could garner from games. Nevertheless, if the Minimax theorem isn't convincing enough, after John Nash elaborated on it a couple of decades later, the fields of economics and computer science would ultimately grow to intersect because of another single valuable proposition in this text, the notion of utility. Von Neumann and Oscar Morgenstern formalized the concept of rational decision-making according to expected utility or the expected payoff from committing to an action. They define a number of complicated axioms in order to do so, but their narrative explanation boils down to a basic economy. Think about the following scenario. You receive five points of happiness when you buy an apple, six points of happiness when you buy a banana, and ten points of happiness when you buy a watermelon. If ten dollars can buy you seven apples, six bananas, or four watermelons, which would you choose? You would optimize for your happiness given the fixed cost, so you'd choose the watermelons. This very notion exists in computer science in the form of a loss function that a computer learns to optimize. Instead of having variable payoffs for a fixed cost, it's easier to think about an expected payoff with variable costs that you work to minimize. The expected utility function is the inverse of this loss function, which is integral to the process of teaching computers to make decisions in computer science. The authors also apply a probabilistic layer to these payoffs, which allows the agent to consider different world states, as an autonomous computer agent would with a hidden Markov model, for example. The notion of expected payoffs is extremely intuitive to us now, but it didn't exist in any formal, probabilistically inclined way prior to the publication of this text. By creating a framework for rational decision making by human beings, these authors actually opened the doors to formalizing computers' interaction with the real world as their detection of real world phenomena began to expand and as they began to aid us in our own decision making, as was the spirit of the post-World War II computer science field. Furthermore, game theory is the basis of auction design, matching algorithms, and predictive models in cyber cybersecurity, all of which have permeated the human computer experience since the adoption of the web over 20 years ago. So yes, this is a text written initially about economics, but economics as a field is just the study of interactive agents with scarce payoffs, and that's extremely complementary to what interactive computer systems are doing today. 
To try to understand computer science without understanding rational decision-making is to miss a crucial part of the history of this field.